Welcome to Game Hacking 103 of the GHS Hacking Series. In this video, we'll take a look at what value types are and why they matter for hacking. Now, if you get lost at any point in this video, I recommend you go back and watch the videos in green first. And here's a link to those videos. But alright, let's get started. In Game Hacking 102, I tried and failed to find the current value of potions. And this is because Cheat Engine uses the 4 byte value type we're scanning by default. But we're not limited to that value type, and if we click the drop-down box, we can see all the available value types. And in the 100 series, we'll focus on these highlighted value types. So, let's talk about the values in green first. Byte, 2 byte, 4 byte, and 8 byte. Maybe you've heard of these, and maybe not, but I'd bet that you've heard of these. Megabyte, Gigabyte, and Terabyte. And our value types in green are just smaller versions of the more well-known types. And floats and doubles are just specific kinds of the 4-byte and 8-byte value types. But we'll spend much more detail on value types in the Game Hacking 200 series. And for right now, the main thing you need to know is that all game values are assigned to one or more of these value types. And for example, in some game, money may be assigned to a 2-byte and a 4-byte value type, while XP may only be assigned to a 2-byte. But, as mentioned earlier, Cheat Engine's default value type for scanning is the 4-byte value type, and when it scans for a specific value type, it's only scanning for values that match that value type, which helps to make scans faster, but if what we're looking for doesn't match the value type we're scanning for, chances are we'll miss it every time. Now, Cheat Engine does have an all value type, which scans for multiple value types at the same time. So with this in mind, let's head back to Cheat Engine and I'll change the value type to all. But before we continue, let's double check that the all value type is actually set to scan every value type. And as a reminder, we can do that by heading to Edit, Settings, then Scan Settings, and then making sure that these are all checked. And then click OK at the bottom to save any changes. And alright, with the value type set to all, let's scan for the potion value. And to narrow down these results, I'll change the potion value in the game, then type the new value in the cheat engine and hit next scan. And to narrow down the results even more, I'll change the potion value again, then type the new value into the scan box and hit next scan again. And alright, down to one result. So let's add it to the address list, change the value, and see what happens in the game. And as we can see, it also changes in the game. And okay, to check that we found the real address, I'm selling a few potions to make sure that they count down from the new value. And we can see that they do. And alright, let's find the values of these two items. But instead of scanning for them, I'll use another feature of Cheat Engine that can come in pretty handy. If I right-click the potion address in the address list and select on Browse's memory region, the memory viewer opens, and the first thing I'll do is right-click on any of the numbers in the memory dump area, then head over to display type and change the view from byte hex to byte decimal. And by the way, I'm changing it to byte decimal because that's the value type of the potion value. But if it was a different value type, I'd go with that value type's decimal version. And now everything's much easier to read. And okay, whatever address we use to get to the memory viewer will be displayed in the top left of the dump area with its value immediately to the right. And what I'm interested in are the values just to the right of the first value, 3, 2, 2, 2, 2, 1, and 2. And if we take a look in the game, notice that these numbers all match. So I'll left click the 3 and then start typing to see if anything changes in the game, and it looks like this changed the item's value. Let's try a few more. And it looks like we found the rest of the items without needing to do any more scans at all. And to add something from the memory viewer to the address list, we can right click a value and then select add this address to the list. And in the window that appears, we can change the description, then hit OK and add it to the address list. And now I'll go ahead and do the same for high potions real quick. And alright, before we leave the memory viewer, let's cover a few more quick things. First, I should mention that values aren't always this close together, and you might need to scroll up and down from your starting point and take a look around to find related values. But sometimes, these values are separated by thousands or even millions of addresses, and finding related values this way isn't practical. But this is something to try whenever you can, because when it works, it can save you some time. And the second thing is that values in a game may not immediately show a change when you change them in Cheat Engine, and you may need to do something to refresh the display value on the screen, such as by buying or selling items, or exiting and re-entering the inventory screen. And alright, let's take a look at all these zeros. These are placeholders for future items that I haven't gotten yet. So when I get more items in the game, their values will show up here, and later if I want to get back to the memory viewer, I can just right-click one of the items and hit Browse this memory region again. But keep in mind that whichever address you right-clicked will get placed to the top left of the memory dump area. And okay, back in the game, I'll swap the order of the potions and phoenix downs, and in Cheat Engine notice that the values are now backwards from the game. 
And this happens because in this game, the values are tied to the item locations and inventory and not the items themselves. So our potion address is really slot 1, high potion is slot 2, and phoenix down slot 3. And to show you what I mean, I'll freeze the value of slot 1, then in the game I'll move the 1 grenade into the first inventory slot, which changes the grenade's value to the slot 1's locked value in cheat engine. And this actually makes this pretty easy because instead of adding all the items to the address list but change them one at a time, we can change the value of slot 1 to whatever we want, and then just move the other items into the slot. And just be sure to save your game after doing this so you keep the new item values when you shut down the game. Now, so far in the series, finding values has been pretty easy because we've had an exact value to scan for. But a lot of the time, finding values can be a bit trickier because we don't have numbers we can see on the screen that correlate to the values we're looking for. And in Game Hacking 104, we'll get into how to scan for values like this and more. So be sure to subscribe, hit the bell, and turn on notifications in YouTube settings so you don't miss it. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.